Hey everybody, my name is David Barnes. I'm part of the Emerging Internet Technologies Group at IBM. And in this video, I wanna give you a very quick overview on how to get started with Bluemix. Now, I need to tell you that I am home alone in my office, and I don't know if any of you have ever done this, give a presentation to a glass lens, but it's sort of weird. Then I realized when I was setting up the green screen and the lighting that at 1920 by 1080, at 60 frames a second, I'm just taking the ultimate selfie. That's right, my tripod is my selfie stick. So having said that, I was asked to give a very quick overview of getting started with Bluemix. And I tried and tried and tried to get it down to that 10 minute time frame that they wanted and I just couldn't do it. It sounded like a sales pitch. Instead, I'm going to take as long as I think it takes to be able to cover just enough information for you to get started. So the overview, what is Bluemix? Bluemix is a place for developers to go to quickly create, deploy, and manage applications in the cloud without dealing with any of the underlying infrastructure. I don't have to deal with the GORP. If I go here to bluemix.net, anyone can go here and create a free trial account. There'll be a little icon in the upper right hand corner. You click that, give an email address and fill in the form and it sends you a verification email, you're in, and then you can do everything that I can do here. You have a minimal amount of uh, services and run times that you can use and you can use it in a free trial. The thing I wanna cover on the front page, and I'll skip over a lot of the documentation because it's like uh, skipping the instruction manual. But on the front page, although this is informational, it's important to point out Bluemix is built on Cloud Foundry. Cloud Foundry is an open source cloud platform. The approach to building Cloud Foundry apps is generally uh, choose the runtime that you wanna use, that's what I'll do, and then choose the services that you want and then you deploy your application by pushing your code up and your application is up and running. But Bluemix is more than just a platform as a service. We also, as you can see here, support Docker containers, way cool, and uh, virtual machines from OpenStack. If you wanna learn more, click on the little icons down here and you can get more information. Across the top, I'll scroll here, Dashboard, solutions, catalog, pricing, docs, community, those essentially are your areas of Bluemix. Those menu items will always be there. We'll go into the dashboard in a moment when we start building an app. The solutions tab here, if I click on that, this will give me information on, um, boy, if I wanna build iOS solutions inside Bluemix, how do I go ahead and do that? If I wanna build uh, mobile first applications, I can click on that and I can learn about how to build Android and iOS mobile infrastructure, awesome stuff. Internet of Things, if I wanna learn about that, which is about the hottest thing going on right now, there it is. What's this got to do with Bluemix and a platform in the cloud? Click down here on understand it. It tells you how this all fits together. If you click up on the top and say, hey, I wanna try it out, Bluemix will walk you through how to get started with an IoT app so you can learn more about it. Past that, we'll be going into the catalog, but I'm gonna take another path. That's where all the goodies are. Uh, pricing, I don't do pricing. I'll give you just enough information to send you on your way. Um, I don't have to pay for this stuff, very cool documentation, self-explanatory, and then I'll drop off into the community. To truly get started, the quickest way, go into the dashboard. In fact, the first time you launch Bluemix with a trial account, this is where it's going to take you. The dashboard is essentially my stuff. On the left side, there's a list of my spaces. For the purpose of this video, the spaces are where I organize my stuff. They are far more than that, but that's good enough for this video. Uh, by the way, this double-headed arrow here, click it, it moves that little sidebar out of the way, click it, it brings the sidebar back. Uh, I have created for this one a space and we'll use a scenario to get going here. Uh, I'm with an insurance company, a business unit in the insurance company. They want to branch out into the financial services industry and they wanna create an application or they want me to create an application so our customers can get a little better information about their financial standings and their portfolio. I go to Bluemix. First thing is since it's a proof of concept, I created a space called 2-POC. And for anybody that gets that joke, you get extra credit. Tupac, right? So in my 
to dash POC space. I want to create an application. I click create an app and Bluemix starts walking me through the process. Um, do you want to create a web app or a mobile app? In my case, I want to create a web app. Now I'm going to choose the runtime here and then I'll choose the services that I'm going to use. When I look at the runtimes available, wow, there, do I want to build my app using Node, Java, Go, PHP, Python, Ruby, .NET, or down here, pretty cool, community build packs. What's that all about? Well, because Bluemix is built on Cloud Foundry and Cloud Foundry is open source, there is, of course, a great open source community around it. If the build pack you want is not here, you can go out to the open source community and bring that build pack in and run it on Bluemix. For me, I want to use Node for this application. Here you get some information about the free trial and how much you get for free and you can view documentation. Fine with me. I'm going to click continue. This is where I give my application a name. I'm going to call this uh, finance-poc. This will be the URL. I'll show you that in a moment where the application will be when I'm done. I click finish and that's it. At this point, Bluemix with the Cloud Foundry underpinnings, it's creating an instance of Node and it's firing it up and it's going to be available for me on the web. In fact, the URL that's listed there, finance-poc.mybluemix.net, will be the URL of this app. I'll show you where you can quickly change that route if you want to. But, wow, I didn't have to create a virtual machine. I didn't have to beg somebody, do I have a license for this software? What dependencies do I install? What do I... I didn't have to do any of that stuff. It's up and it'll be running in just a moment. While it's coming up, Bluemix tells me, hey, you as a developer, you create the software and develop your software however you would like. If you want to use Eclipse and you want to push your code, by the way, if you look up there, it is now running, my, my Node instance. If you want to push your code directly from Eclipse, drag this, drop it down on the Eclipse toolbar. It installs the code necessary to push your code right out of your workspace. If I scroll down here, if you want to use the command line, and I highly recommend you do because it's fun and it is the most uh, efficient productivity tool for developers ever, go down here, click on, I want to download the Cloud Foundry command line interface. It's uh, about five meg. When you do, follow these instructions and in about two, four or five minutes, you're on the command line and you're logged in to Bluemix. You can add your services and run times and delete them and control your apps. Lots of cool stuff from there. I'll scroll back down here. And the last thing is Git integration. Bluemix and the entire flow allows me to integrate with a Git repository. I can push my code there. I can pull my code from there and we'll actually do that in just a moment. I'm gonna go back over to the overview on the left side for this application and there it is. There's that instance of Node. It's up and running and there's the URL for it. And if I went there right now, it'll say, great, you've got Node running, but that's all. I need to do something with it. Well, I need a database for this application, some place to put the customer information. So I'm going to click down here and say, I want to add a service. This takes me back into the catalog. You can see I've got the catalog tab selected there, but now I get the real goodies. These are services that I can use from my application. Do I want to use Watson services? I'll scroll down here. Do I want to use some mobile services? Do I want to use DevOps services? I wish I could go into these and show them all to you. It's incredible the amount of cool stuff out here. Notice that some of these are IBM services. Some of these are third party services, the ones in green there. You as a developer use them the same way. And in fact, some of these you'll see are beta services or, or lab services, really early experimental services. For me, I'm going to use this filter bar on the left side. Once again, you can get rid of that if you want with a double headed arrow. I'm going to go down and I want a database. So I click on data management. There's a cloud database. That's what I want to use. I click on it. Bluemix says, hey, do you want to add this to the space you're working on, the application you're working on, and what name do you want? Well, you know, it gives me a default name. I just want to call this Cloudant POC. I click Create, and that's it. Now, Bluemix is creating an instance of that database. When it gets up and running, it's going to ask me, do I want to restage my application so that it can take this? Um, there it is. I'm going to click Restage. Cloud Foundry needs to restage an application to get that service available to it. 
and now it's going to be available for me. A couple of tips along the way. Scroll down. If you click here on credentials, that will give you the secret information to get to that. Uh, URL and secret keywords and all of that stuff to get to use that database. It'll be the same when I add another service. There's also the option of going into the environmental variables to get that information. So while that's starting and while the application is staging, this is one service. I want to add another service. So I'm going to go down here in a moment. I'm going to add another service or API. Also notice that I can bind to a service. If it already exists, I can bind to it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say I want to add another service. Notice the instance is starting right now. And me personally, I like to wait for that to finish before I go and add another service. That's just a tip along the way. So there it is. I'm going to go and say I want to add a service from here. When I do, I go back into the catalog. I say, you know what? I want to add a Watson service here. So I've got this customer system I'm building. I want them to be able to do some self-support ask the system some questions. I want to build a Q&A system. I scroll here and you can see all of these different Watson services available. Concept expansion sounds very meta. Um, a couple of my favorites here. I looked at this. I haven't used this, but personality insights. If you are a clever developer and you are dating, you may want to run build an app around personality insights to find out about the person you may be dating. If the relationship doesn't work out. You found out the person is a total freak. Go over here to relationship extraction. And I don't know if those are really what it's for. What I want to use right here, I want to use a Watson Q&A service. I click on that. It says, once again, do you want to add it to that space, to that application? I say yes. I click create. And once again, Bluemix creates an instance of that. It says, do you want to restage your application? I say yes. And now my node runtime is available and running my cloud and database available and running. I'm restaging right now so that I'll have this Watson Q&A service available for me. And now I need to write code. People see all of this pretty and they think, oh, quick, easy application development for less technical people. No, this is for software developers, people that write software for a living. An easy way to give an example for this. And as I mentioned, you can write your code however you want to. This is just one way, and this is using the IBM DevOps services. If I click here in the upper right hand corner and say, I want to add a Git repository, Bluemix comes back and says, hey, press continue if you want to create the repository and you want to take a, a starter kit and actually populate that repository with it. I say, sure, sounds good. I click continue. It's creating now that Git repository, the code necessary for the Git repository. When it gets done doing this, of course, it says it's going to take a minute because it's going to our IBM DevOps services and it's going to create this new space for me. It's not a space. It's going to create this new repository. There it is. The repository has been created. Your code is now being added. I click close and there's a URL to my Git repository. There's the URL to my app. And by the way, I told you I, I mentioned how you could change your route. Um, up here, if that's not the route to your application that you want, this is the pencil icon that you can click on to do that. If you want more info, uh, my good friend Ryan Baxter wrote a great blog post on how to do this in a couple minutes. Um, if you do Ryan Baxter Bluemix, you will certainly find him out on the web and the post on how to change your route to be whatever you have already. So there is my Git repository. It is created. I say edit code and now this branches me into IBM DevOps services. This is cool stuff and you choose how you want to do it. But I like this. It says it's setting up my workplace. It's cloning my repository. And when it's done, I can go and work on my code. There it is, the starter kit. Let's look down here at the manifest. And yep, there are the services that I added. There is information about the host name and the path and where it's at. And there's a, uh, boy, there's a lot of good information here. I show this again for, for a reason, and that is if this scares you, if you don't know what it is, if this makes your throat tighten, Bluemix is not for you to use. It's for you to benefit from. It's for the application developer to use. When I'm here, if I want to, I can go in and say, hey, I want to import some of my existing code or export from here. I can go off and do track and plan, build and deploy all of the good stuff. 
Up here in green, it's small, but you can see that that finance-poc is running. It's in a normal condition. I could write my code here. I could push this icon and it pushes it back over into Bluemix. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'll go back over here, step back into Bluemix. This is the app that I would push into, but I have a version of this, I guess we'll call it a pre-bake, that, uh, let's see, it's down here in the finance uh, space that I created. Javier Piramonte, Drew Walters, and Carl Azapov created this application. It's essentially a completed version of what I was doing there. If I scroll down, click on it, there's the application. And by the way, you gotta love that name, Javier Peramonte. Okay, David Barnes. Pretty boring, Javier Peramonte. Pretty cool. My wife, she likes when I go by David Barnes because she said it sounds exotic like Antonio Banderas and she seems to have a thing for that. Anyway, that's sort of off topic. That was a fork. Back here, this is the application that they have created. It is complete. There's the URL for the application. If I click that, here it is. I can put in the username. I can log in, check it out. Say, yeah, this is what that business group wanted. I check out, yeah, pretty cool. I love it. I'm going to close this down, go back over into my workspace, take it to them, and they're gonna say, you rock. I love that. And they're gonna give me a huge bonus. Like that's gonna happen. And off we go. They say, we wanna scale this out now. We're ready to go to all of our customers. I click, I want more instances. I want more memory. I click save and Bluemix goes out and scales the application. And I mean scales too. So we quickly create it. We've created a POC, we love it. And now we continue development and we make that business user happy. And seriously, the amount of time it took here. You still have to write code. I know that takes the majority of the time, but what you didn't have to do here, in IBM, just a couple of years ago, if I tried to do this, I wouldn't even try, seriously, because innovation was stifled. I had to jump through so many hoops to even get this far. Now, you go try it. By the way, if it doesn't work out for you, over in the right-hand side, click and delete the application. Low cost to no cost innovation, but when you're ready to go, you scale it out. Last thing I'm gonna mention here, as I said, docs, you can learn all about that yourself. Go into the community. I recommend going into the community because this, Software developers support software developers. That's what the community is all about. It's one of the greatest things about the web. If I scroll down here, you'll see that there's information here on getting started, which I have to update that video. There are tutorials, there are other videos, but my favorite part, back on the overview, scroll down, this is where you get to the communities, both in Stack Overflow and in developer works. There are a community of developers that are extremely active because this is a developer playland. Let's see what we've got here. Somebody asked a question 35 minutes ago and received four answers. Um, by the way, this is a Thursday afternoon. Somebody asked a question two hours ago. They had 45 views, two answers. Scroll down here, and I've been in here times where there were 999 views within an hour. That's how active it is because it's a developer sandbox and playground. Wow, can you tell I'm out of breath? And they wanted me to do this in 10 minutes. There is so much more to Bluemix. In fact, I didn't save my changes there. If you get this message, it's because I changed my instances and I did not save the changes. I'll reset that, go back over to the main page and once again say, there is so much more to Bluemix than I can show in a short video. I'll be creating more videos. You can learn about them or see them at youtube.com slash IBM ET info. But the best way to get started is go to bluemix.net, create a free trial account, check it out yourself, and see just how quickly you can create applications in the cloud.